We are all now invited to climb the mountain. The master, already ascended, invites us to climb the mountain of humanhood to the top. When we make the great leap from the fourth world consciousness of the mind to the seventh world consciousness and live in the seventh world consciousness, we discover that we are no longer under the law of karma of matter, of time, of space, and yet we are walking visibly on this earth. Welcome to Stir Up Your Purpose channel. I believe your day is going great. Today, I'm sharing the fourth class from the Mount Hood seminar series given by Hapfish in 1976. I hope you are able to watch the first class titled Ten Soul Commandments, the second class titled World Transformation, and the third class titled Infinite Ines. All together, there are ten classes in this series. And this fourth class that I'm sharing today is titled Seventh World Consciousness Now. In this series, Hab takes the listeners on a soul journey. It brings out the inner truth of the symbolic meanings of the Ten Commandments. And in this fourth class, he expands on the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Hab beautifully says, from this honoring of the seventh day, you are in the Lord's prayer automatically. As a matter of fact, the fourth commandment is the nature of true prayer. The fourth commandment is the Lord's prayer. It is the way you pray, not by asking but by recognizing thy kingdom come, by accepting thy will is done. The principles shared by Hafiz are quite simple, but not meant for the human mind, for that little mind cannot grasp the ideas, but it must unfold from within, and this comes through contemplation and practice. And this practice can just be as simple as planning to go for grocery, for example. Rather than just saying to oneself that I am going to do the grocery, say to yourself that you are already back from doing the grocery and see yourself in your mind's eye arranging the grocery in the pantry or the fridge or wherever is natural to you and feel the reality of this exercise, revel in it and enjoy the reality of what you are doing and then let it go. In that moment, you are in the fourth commandment. For in truth, there is no time and space. And when you are now physically going to do the grocery, it is spirit that will direct the activities, guide the body, and make your path smooth through subtle inner nudging. And yours is simply to be sensitive to those inner leadings. That is a practice of the infinite way. And it is as simple as that. Nothing complicated. And when you listen to this talk, don't get caught in the words. But listen in between the words and allow spirit to unfold the essence of what Hab is presenting. I'll leave you with my favorite Hab Fitch statement 
from this seminar and I hope you like the pictures from beautiful BC, Canada. Where do you begin and where does God end? Is there a place where God ends and you begin? And if you can find that place where God ends and you begin, you will not be in absolute truth. Think about it a moment. Is there a God and you? Or is there a God without a beginning and without an ending? And now, try to find yourself in that picture. Now, if you want to be absolute and you find no place where God ends and you begin, then you must go deeper than the surface of that understanding. You must then act from that awareness. See if you can accept that there is no place where God ends and you begin. And when you feel you can accept it, make the correction in consciousness, family, knowing you can never go back to a place where there is a separation between God and yourself. And now, go even deeper because there is no place where God ends and I begin. I and the Father are one. But God is spirit. And if you have pledged yourself to absolute truth, you must now accept that because God does not end and you begin, but God is continuous and God is spirit. The only reality to which you can answer is I am spirit. We are all now invited to climb the mountain. The master, already ascended, invites us to climb the mountain of humanhood to the top. When we make the great leap from the fourth world consciousness of the mind to the seventh world consciousness and live in the seventh world consciousness, we discover that we are no longer under the law of karma of matter, of time, of space, and yet we are walking visibly on this earth. And so to take us above the human mind, above its limited capacities, above the human mind which can never know God. We are invited to live consciously in the promised land, to live consciously in heaven. Son, all that I have is thine. All that I have. And when you have learned not to use the name I in vain, when I to you signifies your self, which was never born and never dies, when I to you means I am the eternal spirit of God, the infinite spirit of God, then, son, all that I have is thine. And so you are asked to live now in the consciousness of I, which possesses all that the Father has. You are asked to stop becoming, 
to stop seeking, to stop striving, to stop struggling. Stop trying to make things happen because I already am complete. I already am self-sufficient. And I being your name, you then accept self-sufficiency and completeness and wholeness. You accept the kingdom of God in its fullness within you now. You are threading the robe of Christ with truth. And when you have opened this inner eye now to the fact that the fullness of the kingdom of God is present where you stand as the very substance of your being, And you are no longer willing to turn back from your own substance. Then I am revealed as infinite grace. And a new universe opens up. Not the, the human concept of a better universe because the human mind cannot envision the kingdom of heaven now. But I can, for I live in the kingdom, and your terminology now becomes my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is the seventh day, which comprises all other days. My kingdom is all that the Father is, all that the Father hath, I have. You live in your celestial abundance, completely indifferent to the evidence of the human mind. This is your seventh day consciousness. When you are willing to abide in it, the treasures of the kingdom pour forth. When this was given to the world in the fourth commandment, it was not recognized. But neither was it recognized later when it was given to the world by Christ Jesus. And you recognize it instantly now. He was teaching his disciples, which we are, one of the greatest truths we can ever know. You'll find it in Mark, in 9.2. And it begins with a very clue which the world overlooked, which is the meaning of the very fourth commandment, which he was demonstrating in the transfiguration. And here are the key words. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John. That's all you had to know if you knew that he was honoring the seventh day. After six days, he was revealing the secret that after six days is the seventh, and if you live in the seventh day, this is the key to transfiguration. And back in the commandment, the reason is given as follows. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy.
you will discover now that from this simple statement the Lord's Prayer evolved. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then as the Lord's Prayer goes on, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed or holy, be thy name. Thy kingdom is come. Thy will is done on earth as it is in heaven. From this honoring of the seventh day, you are in the Lord's Prayer automatically. As a matter of fact, the fourth commandment is the nature of true prayer. The fourth commandment is the Lord's Prayer. It is the way you pray, not by asking, but by recognizing thy kingdom is come, by accepting thy will is done. And when you say, give us this day our daily bread, you are accepting that the bread is here. Give us this day, this seventh day. I am living in the seventh day where the bread of life is. And because you live in the seventh day, you are fed by the bread of life. And because you live in the seventh day, you are not tempted by the senses to walk into a fraction of your being. The seventh day leads you not into the temptation of the senses, which is to fractionalize infinity. The human mind believes evil exists, but in the seventh day you are delivered from that belief. The entire Lord's Prayer is the living prayer which recognizes I am now in the seventh day of creation. The human mind cannot live in the seventh day of creation. The human mind is conditioned to live in the fourth day. Three worlds away, three levels of consciousness away from truth. And so when it says, six days shalt thou labor, it is referring to the six days in which you function first in the human mind, in the human soul, which now you recognize is not your human soul at all, but is your spiritual soul. Then you function in the spirit as soul and spirit combining. And these are the days of labor. Every day prior to the seventh day is a day of labor, different levels of labor. First the human, then the divine. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all the work. In other words, you've got two more worlds of work to do, and that's divine work. serving spirit. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Thy God. And in it thou shalt not do any work. Isn't that the statement that the seventh day is the day of grace? In the seventh day thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within the gates. 
And why? Because you won't have a son and a daughter in the seventh heaven. When you enter the seventh heaven consciousness, you are the only self, the one. There is no other. Honor the seventh day. Be being itself. Now, this is the higher now. And it is our function to live in this higher now. Now, while we live in the human mind, we are living in the greatest criminal on earth. Just think of that human mind and the miracles it has performed on this earth. And think of the same human mind and how capable it is of murder. Think of its successes, its failures. Think of its uncertainties and its confidence. Think of its heights and its depths. It can only be depended upon to be undependable. It is not its own master. That human mind never knows God. It may worship all day. It may tithe. It may sacrifice. But in the final analysis, it makes no contact with God. The human mind sends boys to war. The human mind succumbs to the germ. But actually, do you realize that no human body ever goes to war? The human mind goes to war. We don't send boys to war. Human minds go, and the bodies seem to follow. Nobody is ever sick. Human minds are, and the bodies seem to suffer. The human mind is the greatest criminal on earth and the cause of every death that has ever appeared. And when we are told to honor the seventh day, to be transfigured as the master, we are given the key to living now in eternity. The human mind does not live in now. It lives in yesterday, which it calls now. It lives in the reflected glory of the past. The human mind is ever rehashing, ever returning to yesterday. Even as we sit here, human minds all over the world are living in yesterday. They think it's now, but they're living in time that is moving only in their minds. There's another now, a higher now. There is a now that does not go into yesterday. And in the seventh day, you will discover this now. It is not passing. But you will discover more you will discover something that the human mind will never know about the new universe. In the universe of now, newness is a law. The new universe is constantly new. It is the nature of God to be constantly birthing itself. There's no rehashing. There's no repetition. There is only constant newness into infinity. And that's how you'll recognize that you're in the now universe. Your ascending progression of newness is continuous. There's nothing to do over again. It is the law of reality. That's what birth on this earth is in its own way, striving to emulate the ever-newness, the ever-birthing of reality and spirit. On the seventh day, 
after six days it elapsed, he demonstrated not his change of body. He revealed the seventh day body of spirit which is not located in a place, in a time, in a space, in a form, in an area with finite boundaries which does not constitute organs and functions. He was not transfigured. They were. Their consciousness was opened up to see what was there for that very self that they then saw was there at the moment of the appearance called birth of the Master. That was the same self that was present in what is called a manger. It is the same self that was apparently doing miracles on the earth. All it was doing was revealing itself everywhere in its glory. And it says that that seventh day consciousness of form is also your form now. Be transfigured does not mean tomorrow. It means that God already has individualized as you. It isn't going to happen. It has happened. The seventh day consciousness is before the world was. In the seventh day consciousness before the world was, the glory that you always have been is experienced. And the transfigured body of the Son, which you are, is recognized as your infinite body. And there's no work to be done. The only work is to rest in the knowledge of who you are. And that infinite body will manifest as what the world calls a you appearing to man as physical self. But while your so-called physical self walks in this fourth world, your consciousness is living in the seventh world, receiving and actually sending your own manner into the fourth world appearance. In this constant living, faithfully, in the consciousness of the seventh day, you live under the law of perfection. You cannot accept less. There is no way that you can accept imperfection and stay in the seventh day consciousness. You're out of the Lord's prayer. The Lord's Prayer is the acceptance of the seventh day here and now. The seventh day consciousness does not accept time. Time is no more. The seventh day consciousness cannot accept space. Because your transfigured self your infinite spiritual self does not inhabit space. Space is but the concept of the fourth day world. You're no longer becoming, you are being. But you're being now. Now is the kingdom of God within you. Now art thou the Christ. Now are we the sons of God. And as you develop your capacity to live in this tree of life, you suddenly become aware that you have evacuated humanhood. It has gone away. It's there under the head, above the feet, 
in appearance only. You can function independent of it. It does not rule you. It is only a fourth world appearance. You are in the seventh day consciousness. Every day, you are then invited to partake of the infinity of the kingdom of God. No longer do you have to make things happen, strive to improve anything, because everything you can think of wanting to happen or to improve is already done. You don't have to figure out how to stop war. There is no war in the seventh day. And if you believe there is, you're not in the seventh day. You don't have to prevent death. There is no death in the seventh day. You don't have to find harmony. You are living in the kingdom of is. And every appearance that denies is is but the temptation of the sense mind. You still have the sense mind, but it no longer is the master of your house. In Revelation we have a passage, I think, It's in uh, 1920. It is the beginning of ascension. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles upon the earth before him, with which he declared, deceive them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. When this beast is taken, and them that worshipped his image, no longer can deceive us, it is because the human mind of the fourth world has been unmasked as the self-betrayer. Now let us, for a moment, journey into the seventh day. Literally, to place our consciousness in the knowledge that we are in the promised land now. What is there? Do you see things or do you feel infinite qualities of the Father? Do you feel rays of love, rays of beauty, rays of glory, rays of honor, rays of fullness, rays of wisdom. Consciously you walk through the infinity of perfection in all things without exception. This is where your consciousness rests and you explore your own being which contains all of the kingdom of God. Here, now, not passing in time, but in the infinity of eternity. This has been with you since before the human mind looked out upon a world. This has been with you before your first incarnation.
this has been the totality of your being and though your human mind can never fully comprehend the infinity of your being you place your consciousness there and let infinity reveal itself Alice in Wonderland never had it so good. This is permanent truth that you can depend on day after day after day unto eternity. The fullness of the perfection of the kingdom of God is the nature of your being. Start thinking of it as my kingdom. I, the Spirit of God, in my kingdom is only joy, in my kingdom is only peace, and as the world walks in its fourth, my, fourth world concepts of mind, I walk in my kingdom right where the world seems to be. I am keeping the seventh day holy. I do not work. The Father doeth the works. And I work hitherto. I simply show forth that which the Father is doing. When your consciousness is placed in the kingdom of God here and now, everything presented to you by the mind of this world is nullified. All the fractions diminish. All the finitizing is seen to be a lie. No longer do you see separate selves. No longer do you live in separate incarnations. You are living in the fullness now. And each day as you do this, the threads of the robe are woven so that consciousness opens up to the fullness of I, Christ. By walking from the fourth world to the seventh in consciousness, we are accepting the presence of spirit, the power of spirit, the wisdom and will of spirit, the fullness of spirit. We are no longer dividing the garment of the Father. And it is worth every human tribulation to stand fast in that consciousness without wavering and without accepting the tribulation as reality. Your daily challenge is to walk in the fourth world visibly and to walk in the seventh world in consciousness. That is your daily challenge. To walk through the temptations of limitation, of lack, of poverty. To look where children are starving and know they are not. To look where boys are dying and know they are not. To look where men are waiting for jobs to feed their families and know that is not what is happening except in the fourth world mind. 
my father has already given to each the fullness of the kingdom but with human eyes we look at the seventh world the fullness of heaven and it is diminished in our consciousness down to the fourth world of flesh the cosmic image is not there Your enlightenment is living in the seventh world. Now, what are your limitations? There is not one. What are you trying to do to accomplish? Nothing except to be and not let yourself try to become because becoming is a denial that I already am. Again in Revelation, The fullness of controlling the world mind is shown in the 20th chapter. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now this is going to turn out to be the overcoming in your consciousness of the world mind. This angel is what happens in your consciousness as you dwell in the seventh heaven or the seventh world. The seventh heaven and the seventh world is actually the third heaven. And the numbers get confusing at times, but the third heaven is the fullness of all heavens. And the seventh world actually means the seventh level of consciousness of the seven days of creation, which is the same as the third heaven. As you dwell in the third heaven, in the promised land, literally in heaven here now. That which takes place is an angel coming down from heaven. And so from the seventh state consciousness into the fourth world comes an angel having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon. You see, this is the way you overcome the world mind. You can't overcome the world mind from the fourth world, from the human mind. You can't grapple with it. And he laid hold on the dragon and the serpent, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now in the fourth world, when the human mind and the world mind's activity in the fourth world is overcome, you will ultimately find yourself in the soul realm. You're free. And it says for a thousand years because there are still to be challenges. But this inner activity witnessed by John is something that takes place in your consciousness as you walk visibly in the fourth, living consciously in heaven now. And if you have never felt that you could do this, you'll find it really is not as difficult as it sounds. 
The sense mind has held us captive. We believe what it sees, what it hears, what it touches. But as you lift your consciousness, consciously dwell in the higher now, you find the power of the sense mind is less magnetic, as I know many of you have already discovered in many ways. And finally, the angel descends and breaks the umbilical cord of the fourth world mind. It has no power. It cannot deceive you. It cannot tempt you. It cannot make you believe in the existence of evil or lack or limitation of error of any nature. It cannot convince you of sin. And as you dwell further in this consciousness, you will find and I I in the midst of you I saw a new heaven and a new earth For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. The sea of world thought is gone. You don't have to fight it every day. You don't have to let down your God and worry that the sea of world thought is going to enter and contaminate and betray and deceive. It is broken forever. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first earth had passed away. As we dwell in our seventh day consciousness every day, we are aware of the non-power of this world. We are aware that the human form had made us seem to be under the power of this world. But in the seventh day, like the Master, we do not dwell in the consciousness of limited form. Nor do we see limited form anywhere except with the sense mind. But rather we witness all of the great glory of heaven here on earth. Not the heaven of religion, not the heaven of tomorrow, not the heaven upstairs, but a new heaven. The old human concept of heaven is no longer with us because we literally know heaven to be here, to be omnipresent, to be here now, not in tomorrow alone. Gone is the hereafter heaven. And each one of us should be practicing that I live now in the full glory of heaven. And all of these little serpents and dragons that have been trying to persuade me of my lacks and limitations are nothing more than the chaos of the world mind. Let them drop away. They never were true. We are almost spinning now that garment which we are going to wear forever. It is already finished, but we call it a garment because it is the clothing of the mind, and it becomes the clothing of the soul. 
nothing that will ever happen to you in heaven is not already true this very moment. And it's just a change of consciousness from the me to the nature of yourself as I spirit and then the accepting of I spirit am all that the Father is now. There's no becoming. There's no future. There's no tomorrow. There's only now, eternally. And if you see yourself this way, you are accepting yourself to be that which is called the Son of God. Sonship is simply the realization that I am. And all that accompanies sonship, I am. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Strangely, this wasn't in John's future, was it? John was witnessing his own new consciousness as it was being formed. He was living in the awareness of the seventh day and the seventh day was doing its own thing, manifesting itself to him in this fashion. What will happen when you live in the seventh day? It will not be precisely as John saw it, but it will be another apocalypse. It will be your revelation of truth. Not something manufactured for you, but your own individual revelation of truth as a constant flowing fountain of water. The seventh day consciousness is the fountain itself. You see, it is the new substance which ever was and ever will be. It is the continuous substance. It is the substance of all that we see through the veil. Your substance is the infinite I now. You are living in eternity now. And in eternity, there is no end. In eternity, there is no beginning. Your I self is the only self. You must learn to reject every claim the world makes upon you that you have another self than I. I was told by an individual once of a meditation in which this particular woman was meditating on I, and she saw a word, and I don't remember the word, but it had a, the letter I in the word. And as she was meditating, the I in the word grew, grew, grew. It became quite large. And then it became larger than she was, this I in the word that she was meditating with. And finally, it became big enough to walk over to her and swallow her. And as it swallowed her, she felt this incredible peace. She was swallowed up in I, literally, in her meditation. And this may not happen that way to you, but in some way, you will know that all I can ever be is infinite I. Nothing missing. No spare parts. No replacements, no repairs. 
infinite eye, perfect in all ways forever. And this is the truth that we violate when we do not accept ourselves to be infinite eye. When you do not smile through the tribulation, you are saying, I am suffering as this shows me to be. I am not infinite eye. And in that you break the power of eye to reveal itself. You show that you are not ready to be released into the fifth world. But when you suffer through every false temptation, and that's all temptations are, with fortitude, with the knowledge that I am the infinite I, when you are true to I, then you find that the tribulation is revealed as the dream of the world mind. It will not reveal itself as the dream until you have stood in I. The angel cannot descend and cast this dragon into the bottomless pit as it is symbolized here. But there is no dragon, you see. And there is no bottomless pit. And the angel casting the dragon into the bottomless pit is the breaking of the dream, of a life, of a self, in which I and the Father are not one without separation. John is witnessing the union, not the separation. He's witnessing the bride adorned for her husband. There is a union. He is returning to the one I, the one self, where two are one. and where one has no opposite. You can feel the overtones of the human mind saying, this man or this woman is really I, and yet, clinging to you, in spite of that, will be the remembrance of the habits of this world. You know yourself as a man, or you know yourself as a woman. You know yourself as a person. You know your weight and your height. None of this is true. Spirit has no weight and no height. Spirit is not male or female. Spirit is not Greek nor Jew. There is neither Greek nor Jew, nor male nor female, says Paul. And he's speaking of I, the Spirit. Now, when you have accepted the basic concept that you are I. It is not complete if you think you are I, spirit, and something else. You cannot be I, spirit, living in the seventh day of consciousness, at least trying to, and also be that which was born of woman. And so, Nicodemus, you must be reborn out of the belief that you were born of woman. Out of the belief that you have matured into flesh, which now may be 70 or 80, Nicodemus. That's not you. You are I. And I was never born. And I is perfect now as the Father. And I comprises all the treasures of the kingdom now.
I loves without opposite. I never changes from love to hate. Not I. Only humans do. I have. I never says I have not. I am. I never says I will be. Do you see how you're on top of passing time? It isn't fooling you. It makes its promises about what you will have tomorrow, and you don't have to wait for tomorrow. I have. Meat the world knows not of. I am the wine. I am the water. I am the bread of life. Everything I need, supposedly, I already am. There is no need to find it, seek it, strive to attain it. And this is the consciousness that is standing in I have. Oh, it hasn't manifest, I know, but I have it. And it will descend from heaven into visibility as I know I have it. It isn't money in the kingdom of God. It's something else. It isn't food to chew in the kingdom of God. It isn't clothing in the kingdom of God. It isn't success in the kingdom of God. But it manifests as these things in this world. If I stand in I am the living substance, its intelligence will manifest as every need. It is the Father's good pleasure. It is the pleasure of my being called I to manifest the kingdom. Now this is the key of the fourth command. You are. Live in the seventh day, which is the infinite I. the infinite I, I am. The infinite way is the revelation of the fourth commandment. The infinite I, I am. And it's a truth that must be lived in in consciousness. To ignore it is to lose the treasures of the kingdom in your daily experience. All that the Father has, I have. Because I and the Father have no separation between us. God is flowing, individualizing as that which I am. All infinity, I am. God can never be less than infinity. And God is flowing as my individuality. I am individually infinite. The human mind cannot understand it, but I am. Nothing can be withheld in your being. The birth of this idea in you leads to the union of the bride who is adorned for her husband. And this is your soul being wedded to your spirit. To feel this as John did, that his soul and spirit were being one, is to reveal to us what happens in your true being. Soul and spirit being one is already a fact in being. Your soul and your spirit are one.
But this seeing it happen is the expansion of consciousness to become aware of that which already is. John is revealing what already is and is becoming conscious of that which already is. Your soul and your spirit are one. And your soul is expressing the fullness of your spirit. And your spirit is expressing the fullness of Christ, which is the totality of God individualizing as your being. We can at this moment accept the presence of a consciousness far different than our human minds right here the ever-present divine consciousness. Everything we can think of or try to think of already complete in this consciousness which is here. It knows all that there is to know about all reality. It is here. And if you walk across the street, it is there. And if you walk on the other side of the veil, it is there. And if you go back 200 years, it is there. It has always been everywhere. And therefore here, where this consciousness is, is everywhere to it. It is everywhere and here. And when you are aware of its here-ness, it being everywhere connects you with infinity. In my conscious union with the consciousness of God here, I am one with all who walk in spirit. And who are they? They are myself. You're not alone, and yet you're the only being. I believe that when you will accept that you are the only being even though I know you cannot hold this round the clock when you will accept it that you are the only being as many of you have heard on the tapes and when you attain not just a mental acceptance of it, but the experience of it, you will want to return again and again to that experience. There's no substitute for it. It really is the seamless robe. I am I, and I has no other. Therefore, I am the infinite I, which has no opposite. I am being, and there's no other being than being. Now, when this is your consciousness, the fourth world of human experience bursts at the seams with all kinds of wonderful and strange activity. It's like the disciples at Pentecost appearing drunk. But the activities that rain into your visible life on earth are blessed. They're blessed because there is no separation in consciousness. And there can be hundreds and thousands of incredible things happening all for the better all showing forth that because you are living as being without opposite you have touched the magic substance and the magic power and these are the encouragements you need to give you the confidence to walk further into the unknown as a spiritual pilgrim to expect to have this being 
light its own path. And as you do, you will find what John is finding, that soul and spirit are merging the fifth and sixth worlds. Actually, spirit is leading soul higher into a greater awareness of itself. All of this is internal. It has nothing to do with what you do out in this world. But it shows forth through grace as what we call manifestation or demonstration or visible experience. You see how clearly you have overcome body sense which was limiting, which confined, which pushed us back into this moment of passing time. How you overcome negative thought, and how you even overcome positive thought. Because all that is flowing through in that consciousness is divine infinity. Infinite thought infinite manifestation and man's concept of infinite manifestation becomes visible as things of this world the things of this world you see under grace are still images but they are now images of infinite divine manifestation blessed images And they will be your signposts that you're on your way to the moment of transition. I think I'd like to just look at John another moment before we meditate on transition. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Well, of course, when I is your name, God is with you because I is God. John is seeing the acceptance of I as your identity. He is seeing the entire process of acceptance as a finished fact. Emmanuel. Now, will tomorrow's headlines, or today's headlines, whatever they are, pull you out of your seventh-day consciousness? And if they do, would you recognize that that is what has happened? Would you be ready to turn away from that which is a wriggling serpent on the ground and look up at the brass serpent on top of the building and see it isn't moving? Can you remember the brazen serpent that does not move while the world is screaming with its claims? I'm sure you can. For this truly is the way to the transition into the fifth world. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I, in the midst of you, accept it as consciousness, as living self, 
as substance, as the very being that you are, as the infinity without opposite, shall wipe away all tears. Again, the fourth commandment is shown to be the key to living in reality. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Be sure to look again at this 21st chapter of John, because it is telling you what happens when you accept the fourth commandment in its pure form and live consciously in the seventh day. Now, as we do this daily, and we are strong and able to maintain some degree of fidelity there, something is happening, something that happens no other way. It's like the young bird in the nest of the mother. Something is happening to that bird. It's being trained up there so that it can fly. As we are standing in I, infinite I, eternal I, we are being trained so that we can fly. This new consciousness that we are accepting is becoming stronger. We have to have this new consciousness to survive in the fifth world. We won't have the physical form appearance anymore. We'll be living soul, living in a soul form which is quite different than the physical form. The soul form is more like a body of truth which has no shape or size. Like God itself which has no shape or size. There is a body of soul which is an incorporeal body. And the word body as we know it in humanhood does not fit it. But we use it because there is no better word at the moment. There is a body of law, but it's not a physical body. This soul body becomes your soul consciousness which supports you in the fifth world where you are enabled then to prepare for this union with your own spirit. In other, again, it is the becoming conscious of a union that already exists. And it is the preliminary step to the birth of Christ in consciousness. In other words, what you're doing now is a preparation for the total living experience of the infinite eye. Let us see now in the meditation on transition if we can in some way become aware of just what that word means. At the last trump, says Paul, We shall rise into a new level of being.
bread you cast upon the waters will return unto you. And that bread is the purity of your consciousness now or the impurity of it. That bread is the seed of every so-called tomorrow. As your consciousness becomes more and more the consciousness of the Father, as you eliminate the second mind, the human mind, the mind that never was, as you learn to dwell in the one consciousness, the one divine mind, by accepting the truth of being, that which is called transition ceases to be transition. It is even higher. It is the experience now of what you are. And in the experience of what you are, you attain what is called the first resurrection. You literally are able to live in the fifth world before the body passes out of the fourth. Your transition, your resurrection occurs in the fourth world, here. Here you attain the first resurrection. You become aware of yourself as a being with no boundaries. And as this particular understanding becomes more permanent, more established, you find yourself living as a person, different than other persons, no longer living in the personal sense of self, but living without boundaries, and yet living in a body that has no boundaries, living in a substance that is uninfluenced by this world. As you become fully conscious of this, the whole idea of transition changes. You simply are in the fifth level of consciousness or the soul realm. And to you, the remaining appearance of a body is just excess baggage that you put up with. It's a, an appendage like a tonsil that you don't need. but it will remain there until the bird can fly. Until you are truly self-sustaining without blemish. You are to attain this degree of consciousness. Within a certain period called human time within this incarnation. For you, the veil vanishes. It is no longer a veil. You are everywhere. You cannot be bounded You have seen the angel cast the dragon to the bottomless pit. For you there is no more world. There is only my kingdom. And then the Father calls you worthy, washed, 
no longer a stranger. To me, this is not just a possibility or a probability. It is the way prescribed by the Christ. And one day, the inner voice will say, your time has come. You are now a permanent resident of the kingdom of God. In your consciousness, you have attained the awareness of the kingdom. Wear the robe. You have threaded the robe by purifying your beliefs of all that is untrue by serving the Spirit and letting the acts of your being show forth the purity of your consciousness. You have earned the robe that you wear, and you wear it within yourself. Then there is no darkness. There is no time. You are on both sides of the stars. If this to you is futuristic, you are not accepting your name. If it is beyond your reach, you are not accepting your name. It is this knowledge which enables you to stop crucifying the Christ of your own being. But rather to evacuate the sense of humanhood which automatically has been our way of crucifying the Christ. In your consciousness of I, you are accepting immortality. And until you have accepted immortality, the laws of mortality will govern you. You must live in the seventh day for it is the key to the kingdom of God. Again, as we are moving with dedication in the directions prescribed by the Spirit of Christ through Moses, through Jesus, through Paul, through your own being, we find that at every step of the way, new help comes because the Father knoweth your needs. And now as you are poised at this pinnacle of acceptance, waiting, wondering, trying to feel what is expected of you, if your inner motives are pure, Spirit knoweth your needs. The Father who seeth in secret means the Father who knows your motives because the Father is the spirit of your own being. If your motives are pure, and pure means to fulfill the will of the Father, 
then the reward follows. And the reward is the next step. Always the next step. Every time you obey a commandment with fidelity, another doorway opens because each one leads to the next doorway. Dwell, if you can, between now and tonight, on the meaning of honoring your father and your mother. How strange that Jesus forever says, my father doeth the works. He never says, my mother doeth the works. In fact, he hardly alludes to the commandment, honor thy father and thy mother or at least we don't see it in those words. And yet it was very important to the Christ expressing through Moses as the fifth commandment. Why? Honor thy father and thy mother. And you'll find that is the assistance you need to carry you further into your acceptance that I am the infinite I. Think about it. and practice the seventh day consciousness as best you can not just tonight, today, tomorrow but from this point onward for it is the living kingdom of God expressing on earth you will see how quickly you step away from those in the fourth world how quickly you can identify those in the fourth world they're three worlds away and they appear in the same world as you do We are moving out of darkness now into light and soon our light will shine. I'll see you later tonight. Thanks again.